Hello, my name is Jason Chanko and I'm the Applications Marketing Manager at Siglent Technologies North America. In today's video, we're going to take a closer look at the Bode plot function of the four channel XE series of oscilloscopes. So, let's start with the device under test or a little bit more about Bode plotting. Uh, first, let's take a look at a typical Bode plot curve. This is shown here. You'll see that we've got the magnitude the phase and then the frequency. So we're looking at the frequency response of the device under test. In this case, what we want to see is how does the amplitude or magnitude of the signal coming through the device change with frequency and also what happens to the subsequent phase as it passes through the device under test. And the way we can do this is using a comparative method where we have the input signal and a matching signal the, the input signal is going to be monitored or measured, and we're going to compare it to the response signal. So we've got a stimulus and a response. We're going to measure both of those at the same time and compare the, amp the magnitudes as well as the relative phases. And in that way, we can say what the device under test is going to do given that particular frequency and amplitude. In this case, we're going to take a look at this low-pass filter. Uh, it's a 50-ohm filter that operates from 1.8 megahertz to 30 megahertz, and again, it's a low-pass filter, so we expect it to pass everything below 30 megahertz, but as we get closer to 30 megahertz, we'll start to attenuate the signal, so the amount of signal coming out of the output will decrease as we get higher and higher in frequency. So what we're going to to for or to perform this test we've got our XE oscilloscope again this method that we're talking about is only going to be applicable to four channel X-E series those are two models right now that's the 100 megahertz SDS 1104XE and the 200 megahertz SDS 1204XE which is the model that we're using for this particular test today uh, we're also going to be using a generator. In this case, we're using one of our SDG6000X series. This particular technique that we're talking about works with an SDG1X, 2X, or 6X family of products that gets you from 30 megahertz with the SDG1032X all the way up to 500 megahertz with the SDG6052X, which is what we have here. Uh, this test can also be run using the standalone SAG1021. This is an accessory for the 4-channel XE. This goes up to 25 megahertz. The reason I'm not using it for this particular test is this is a 30 megahertz filter. So we, uh, we need to go beyond 30 megahertz in order to see the filter effect on the frequencies as we're going through. So go back to the diagram that we originally had shown. We want to have the source channel look identical to our channel going through the device under test at the beginning, but once it passes through the device under test, then we'll be measuring it with the scope and we can see what the effects are. So the first part of this test is the electrical configuration. So we're going to connect the XE scope to the SDGX using a USB cable as shown. Then we're going to connect two uh, 50 ohm terminations. There's a 50 ohm terminator. The reason that we're going to have a 50 ohm termination, the XE oscilloscopes do not have a 50 ohm input. They only have a one meg input. Since everything in our measurement is 50 ohms, the generator as well as the um, as well as the low pass filter, we want to have impedance matching so we minimize our reflections and that will uh, minimize the effects on, on the phase. So we're going to use that 50 ohm termination both on channel one and on channel two. So we've got channel one connected uh, from the oscilloscope connected to channel one on the generator. And we've got channel two connected to the output of the device under test and then the input of the device under test is from the generator channel 2. So channel 1 output is going directly to channel 1 on the scope. Channel 2 output on the generator is going to the device under test, through the device under test, and then after the device under test is going to channel 2 of the oscilloscope. So we're going to be able to monitor and measure both channel 1 and channel 2, amplitude, phase, and we'll also be able to measure frequency and plot those all on the oscilloscope very easily. Uh, the, the Bode plot can be done manually. It's just a little bit more tedious because you actually have to plot each individual point. In order to make this easier, the Bode plot function uh, as part of the XE series really, really automates a lot of that. And again, we're going to just kind of get into the, the nuts and bolts here.
Before we get everything going, we need to configure the SDG, and we want channel 1 and channel 2 to track identically. And that means we want the, sign, or the function, the frequency, and the amplitude, as well as the output on and off state to happen simultaneously. In order to do that, we can turn on the tracking method or the tracking mode for the SDGX, uh, in this case the 6. So we're going to press the utility key, we're going to press channel copy coupling, and then we're going to turn on tracking. What that's going to do is now any command or any kind of configuration that we set up for channel 1 is going to be mimicked onto channel 2. Now that we've configured the SDG, we can move on to the oscilloscope and its configuration. So we want to press utility, and press channel or the, press the next page until we get to Bode plot. And you can see that here it's on page two. So we'll just cycle through and now we're back to Bode plot. So now we've got uh, pressing Bode plot. What that's going to do is change the display and give us another configuration menu. Here we've got configure, operation on and off, display and data. Let's go to configure and you can see the AWG with the AWG menu that allows us to configure the amplitude and units as well as the output load setting. In this case we're just going to do 2 volts peak to peak at 50 ohms. We also have the sweep values. So sweep we can configure the sweep type. We're going to do logarithmic and I'm going to set the stop value to 50 meg. So you can you can adjust by whoops you can adjust by just rotating the knob, but you can also bring up a keypad by pressing the intensity knob in. So we'll go 50 meg, and then let's change the start value. So again, we can rotate it to change it, or we can press it in if we're gonna do larger changes, one meg. So we're gonna do a log sweep from one meg to 50 meg, and we can change the resolution or the number of steps between low, medium, and high. For this test, let's just do medium and then we can back out and back out one more time and we should be all set ready to go with this I'm just going to turn it on and so now the output of the generator is changing and we can see that we're actually getting uh, in this case we've got the amplitude in light pink and we've got the phase in dark pink or purple depending on how you want to classify that. And you can see we're slowly collecting that data. This is the, the, the default configuration is set up to auto scale. So you can see there is some quantization as we go through that scaling process. And now we're starting to get the full picture of what we've got. So again, magnitude on the, on the light pink scale, we can see we get a nice roll off here. And then we also have our phase change information as we're going along as well. Now we can take a look. You can see the progress bar is or progress point is actually shown by these two small points that are migrating across the display as we go to each frequency value, and um, the frequencies are rolling on the uh, on the SDG. We have the uh, the nice Bode plot. We can also take a closer look at the data. So we can go over to data, and we can go to list. List is going to give us a full list of all of the values that we've collected. So it has the frequency, it has the amplitude, and it has the phase measurement at each one of those individual points. We can select scroll, and then we can scroll through each individual line and each individual value. And you can see that the point that we're looking at is indicated by these gray cursors and both the amplitude and the phase scale. And with this oscilloscope, we can put a USB stick in the front panel, press the print key, that's gonna push a bitmap image or a picture image of this particular display right to the USB, or we can save as a CSV file to use that data elsewhere. So, I hope that this has been a helpful video for you in learning how to easily perform Bode plot analysis uh, using an XE oscilloscope, a four channel XE oscilloscope, and the SDG X series of arbitrary waveform generators.